very clever. So now we're going to live at the, exactly the same level of technological <laughs> advancement. Yeah, yeah. Crowe, come on down. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I wish I'd have gone first. But uh, I suppose the first thing, um, the question when we arrived was, what are we going to do on, on Monday? Well, if, like the first thing I'm probably going to do is buy an enormous uh, block of chocolate and flowers and a truckload of toys to try and soften the blow for being away for the last three days. <laughs> but I think maybe the first thing you could possibly do would be to look at what you've got already and make a start there. Um, so what I'm about to tell you about, it, for us, it's, it wasn't an enormous investment. It was just strategic planning and a few changes that we made that's uh, made a big difference to our business. Uh, so I'd like to say thanks for the opportunity to speak today uh, to Simon and Coles uh, on behalf of the, the, Goals, the Coles Graze program. Now there's a, a few over 200 producers in this program at the moment. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here standing in, in front of you guys uh, on behalf of the program but also on behalf of everybody um, because I think the room has, has just got so much ability in here and it's going to be great to see what comes out of it over the next 20 years and hopefully you'll be able to uh, apply some part of your of my business that, that may be able to help your own. A bit of my background is I manage a farm on behalf of my family uh, which is situated in the, in the Gabaralong Valley on the Murrumbidgee River, it's 30 k's upstream of Gundagai in New South Wales, southern New South Wales. It's only a couple of hours up the road. Uh, my family has farmed the property for seven generations and uh, over that time we've produced a mix of wool, lambs, cropping enterprises, um, uh, but today we're focused on beef production. It's a pretty simple, simple program. We, uh, we run a self-replacing herd of Black Angus cattle and we aim at taking the offspring through to slaughter weights of 460 to 500 kilos. So still, as I say, it's a very simple project. Uh, my mother and father, who still operate in the business uh, today, they had, they had five children, uh, two boys and three girls. Uh, uh, two boys being myself and my older brother, Andrew. Uh, we, both, we both share a passion for farming. Uh, but when an, an opportunity arose in northern New South Wales, he decided to, to go up and set up shop there and, and open a new frontier for the family. Uh, we run a completely separate businesses and that's what works for us. It's, it's, uh, it, it may quell future problems that might arise in families that, that do operate with your brothers and sisters. Uh, we find that it runs uh, really successfully, my decisions don't affect him. His his decisions his decisions don't necessarily affect what I'm doing. Uh, but we have the same strategic plan, and uh, that is to deliver as high quality product as we possibly can. We try and make it a, a consistent supply. Uh, we we want we like to understand the market and understand the market that you want to sell your product into. It's a, it's, a, it's an important one. And if possible, we like to align ourselves with the processor or retailer. Why would we want to do that? Well, they, they can share a lot of info with you because most of the time they can inform us, they can inform us of what the market's going to do, uh, what, it is, what it is doing. Um, they, have, they have enormous teams working on this. They spend millions of dollars doing it. And we don't, and I don't have the money to do it, and I don't want people to hang over the fence and tell you, oh, this market's going to go, it's, it's, all, it's already gone, or it's, you know, I've heard this, I've heard that. Talk to your processor, talk to your retailer, they know exactly what's going on. That's their business. Uh, so work with them and develop your relationships, and you'll find uh, that there are really approachable uh, companies out there that are happy to work with you, works, you, you work well with them, they'll, they'll work really well with you and we've, we've absolutely found this with Coles. 
So Andrew, my the older brother, as I was talking about, he went on to develop his his properties in and around uh, Garah, which is in northern New South Wales. I'm not quite sure if anyone knows. It's just below the Queensland border. Uh, he's focused on malt barley, and he sells into the the beer making industry. Um, uh, it's his actual fact. He, he supplies in. He supplies into a company called Barrett Burston Maltings, and and they then on supply that to the Peroni Beef brand, and uh, he's a sole supplier of that of that product in Australia. So if you have a, a Peroni, he's he's the one that does it. Uh, uh, and then so back in the south, I supply beef into the Coles, into Coles to be sold under their new and emerging graze and beef brand. Uh, their, their new emerging grows beef brands. So um, why did we why did we decide to do the grows beef brand? Well, the grave be grows beef addresses the new want for traceability and quality assurance from the consumer. Uh, we so when the opportunity came along to be involved with the product from its infancy, uh, we thought it was a great opportunity and we jumped on it. Uh, we just finalised a business based in Sydney where we ran a, a paddock to plate structure, uh, providing 40 bistros with product uh, from our farm. Uh, this was not only a confidence building exercise uh, to see people in the bistros enjoying steak that we had put an enormous amount of time and effort into, uh, but also an exercise in reality. Uh, when trying to find a home for 70% for of the carcass uh, that is not traditionally used on the grill. Uh, so we got on board with a wholesaler, uh, worked with him and learned the ins and outs of the meat trade. Uh, trying to work this business in Sydney from a paddock near Gundagai uh, was taking its toll on me. Uh, Along with, the, along, along with the bite marks from every shark meat dealer between here and Sydney, I figured I had to get back to basics because uh, that's what we're really good at. Uh, but in, in learning that, in the, during that whole process, uh, we knew we had a really good grass-fed product. So when we looked into graze a bit more and found that it was going to be marketed as a premium product, grown under a stringent quality assurance program developed by us, the farmers. Uh, we thought it sounded really good. Uh, so we set ourselves a target of supplying year round. Uh, so we split, we split calving from autumn, uh, from a, a, a predominantly spring calving to autumn and spring. And in doing so, we, we spread our cattle uh, across the year by, by, by just doing that. Uh, so how do we do it? We place a huge emphasis on genetics uh, in our cattle and, and the genetic ability of those cattle uh, because in essence these, these animals have to average a bit over one kilo of day of weight gain uh, for over a period of 12 to 15 months and, and doing that on grass is not easy. So miracles Miracles just don't happen in the grass-fed cattle game. And the basis of it is if, if, the, if the cattle don't possess a genetic ability, you might as well forget it and, um, and, and try to do something else or, or just a, make an attempt at making your business a little bit better some, some other way. Uh, we place a huge emphasis on nutrition. Uh, clearly, they can only eat grass, uh, but grass is not just plain old grass. It's, there's, there's some amazing grasses that are available out there at the moment. Uh, some of them have virtually no nutritional value and they may as well be uh, chewing on a, a phone book or something, but <coughs> there's others that, that will outperform like you've never seen before and, and uh, it's, to, it's thanks to the plant breeders that have been able, that have done that over the years, enable us, to enable us to attempt such a thing as, as year-round uh, grass-fed beef. So we apply as many of the grass-growing techniques, techniques as we possibly can. 
and we sow, we sow rye grasses, fescues, clovers, uh, basically anything that is green, uh, we'll try and grow it. Uh, we also grow all types of cereals and uh, we add grass mixes to them. Um, we, we see increased weight gains in paddocks by purely giving the animal a choice of different things to eat. You know, th this can be as much as 20% in some paddocks. It's a really simple idea, but you must learn about what the animal likes to eat and not, would, not what you think that they should eat. Uh, before the cereal goes to head, uh, we cut it, we cut it uh, because the, during the program in the quality assurance side of things, you, you, can, you can't graze any cereals that have any grain developing in them. That's, that's obvious, it's just part of being grass fed. So uh, to counteract this, we cut all the, all the cereals and make them into silage before they develop to that stage and then we feed it back to them when, when, the, when the dry times arise. Uh, just a really simple other thing that we do is we just we track growth rates of our animals individually um, and we just really simply do that by making use of the analyzed tagging system. Now for us, we don't see it as a burden whatsoever of putting tags in the animals. I understand that it probably would in, in, other, in, in other parts of the country, uh, but we enjoy using it because of the, the tools that are now made to adapt to the analyzed tagging system and it gives us a great ability to uh, store information on these uh, tablets and computer systems by using a, a piece of equipment that you have to buy law anyway. Uh, so make it work for you. And what's next for us? Well, we've built a barley sprouting system uh, where it turns a barley, uh, where, where it turns seed barley into, um, where it takes seed barley uh, where we place seed barley onto trays and we sprout it into grass. Um, and it can, we've been currently feeding it to cows and calves you know, for increased milk production. Now this is in its infancy, infancy and we'll, we'll keep it there for probably 12 months um, to allow us to gain the data needed to be able to make informed decision on whether it's a viable proposition for us or to continue with it or not. Uh, but it's currently converting one kilo of barley into six kilos of fodder. Uh, which is a great increase and it also increases you know, the, uh, the, um, the digestibility of that by probably 50%. In some cases it can be up to 45 to 50%. Uh, we place an importance on cash flow and we can achieve that by a monthly outflow of cattle. That's something you can probably do with your businesses. And cash flow is really important. It'll drive your business and it'll help you to fund your own initiative products, your, your in, in innovative projects. It has great effect on your personal mindset. It helps you, helps you to stay positive and, and it will have a snowball effect on your production and it will grow you a sustainable future to hand on to your next generation. Thank you. I think earlier today we talked about the difference between supply chains and supply networks. and. Uh, and Michael talked about it as part of a supply chain, but I, I was listening to it as a network. He was really developing a connection across and around a circle of influence there that was a really interesting. And his whole, every aspect of his business is really thought through. Very impressive, Michael. Well done. Okay, um, now, well, he talked about